that. So I'm the Colorado rep, so happy to help you guys. Uh, please, if you have questions, let them roll. Uh, happy to address them as they come up. So uh, to get started here, we're gonna log into Vigilon Control Center 7, and uh, we, we land uh, right here on the screen uh, after we open the application on our desktop. So here I've got a couple sites, uh, one in Allen, Texas, and the other one in uh, uh, in my laptop here in Colorado. So we'll get started. So the, the navigation uh, for a Vigilon is pretty easy. Uh, we start with a camera tree on the left and then uh, camera windows on the right. So we can open some cameras here and drag them in. Uh, even if I just double click on this camera, it populates on this side, or that's a map there. Um, adding this camera here is just is easy drag and drop, uh, makes it pretty simple to get up and running with a Vigilon. So if I needed to just see one camera, I can do that. Uh, and cameras can be arranged here in the, in the camera tree underneath a file folder system. Um, but it really gives you a really pretty easy way to kind of start navigating. We've got some views here available as well. Uh, we'll pull up and um, let's add a couple more cameras. Um, there's an intercom, here's another camera. So we filled up those four pretty quickly, but what if we have like nine cameras that we need to see? We can basically just open this uh, camera layout view, and this gives us the ability to make this uh, from four to nine. Uh, I could go up to 16, or I could even go up to 64. Uh, but this basically lets me bring in as many cameras as I need to. Even if I pull over all of the cameras at once, uh, it's gonna populate all of my camera views right now so that's that's great but you know it's probably not bringing me the information i need uh, i can build a custom view here and maybe we'll start with uh, nine divisions let's let's do that let's uh, start working with some exterior cameras so i'm going to bring those guys here get rid of those uh, we'll bring over a couple more here let's um do this guy this one and this guy and another one, right? So now I can go ahead, if I still don't like this view, I can customize this one. So I can go down here to edit layouts, and if I just pull away one of these here, or maybe I want this one, maybe we'll do this. Let's see what that looks like. Now I've got a fisheye camera, uh, which is the intercom. And I, even if, say for instance, like this one, maybe I just duplicate this. I just duplicated that stream so that I can basically make this one camera do the work of two cameras. I can zoom in a little bit farther down here and have this saved view uh, open for me the next time I want to uh, you know, log in. So as a new user here, I want to save this as a new view. Uh, let's name this um, Dallas uh, Factory. spell it right sometimes. So we'll click OK there. And so now, I just showed up for work again today the ne or the next day. I want to get that same camera view back. I'm going to go over to uh, Dallas Factory. Just double click on that. And there's my camera's camera view I just saved. Right? So this could be all my exterior cameras, could be my interior cameras. But the whole idea is just make it easy right? to make sure that you have the cameras and views that you uh, that you uh, refer to all the time, uh, easily uh, available. So let's let's build a couple more views here, and I'll show you another uh, cool feature. Not that one. Uh, this guy, this guy, and we'll take another one of these, and this one. So if I have some of these, you know, saved in, I don't know where it's going with this. Uh, oh, we're going to add another couple tabs. How about that? Let's see. Let's go to focus of attention, let's add that in. And you notice I just clicked on this hamburger menu, right? This opens up another uh, lane of navigation for me. So whether I'm looking for, uh, to search by thumbnails or license plate matches, all those things, they're right over here on, on the side. So clicking that hamburger menu, you know what? Actually, if I forgot how to do anything at any point in time, I can always go to the help menu, which is right down here in the bottom underneath the hamburger. So hamburger takes us to help. And then we can basically say, well, let's let's type in a uh, view, right? Like how do we how do we view a camera? It's, or save views. All those instructions are going to be right here. One, two, three. 
So even if you forget something from today's class, don't worry. Uh, you, can, you guys can just keep clicking around, and then if you get to the help menu, it's going to get you back on track right where you need to be. Um, but let's go back and add a couple more views. Let's add a couple from the courtyard, this one, this one. Make these two divisions or four. Here we go. And the reason I'm adding so many of these views here, all these different tabs, is because I want to hit the cycle button. And cycle helps me basically uh, by rotating these views around. That's a bowling ball or what is that? <laughs> um, but basically lets you just you know have something in front of you so that you can keep this view rotating so that you understand you know what the situational awareness is. Somebody walking up to my building is uh, are the kids in the back, are they on the playground? Uh, that type of information is going to be readily available for you. So cycle, if I need to get out of that, I can just hit escape. Uh, I can just scroll into the top here and then resume that back down and now I'm going to have access again. So I can hide my camera tree with this button right here, just double clicking on it, opens my camera tree. Now I have access uh, to navigate back around to pull in other cameras and maps too, right? So if I wanted to uh, turn the cycle off here and uh, let's say for instance, I have a view with a map. Uh, this would allow me to, if I see this on my screen, I can hover over some of these cameras and then get that live view uh, with the camera right over the map. If I double clicked on that, it's going to open another view for me. So it gives me easy access to uh, my camera views, whatever, wherever they are. So I'm going to close a couple of these tabs. Let's get uh, back to a little bit more about the navigation part. Do, do, do. Let's. Let's pull up a live view. Oh, we got one of these cameras here. Da, da, da. This one should work. All right. All right, so right now, this is a 40 megapixel camera. It's a really nice camera, right? But the picture looks a little fuzzy to start with. It's designed to be like that. So what we're doing uh, is recording continuously in high resolution images. We're also providing a low resolution bandwidth, low bandwidth uh, picture as well. So if you're just sitting here and the picture looks fuzzy, that's because the, it's basically an idle scene. But as soon as I zoom in, it's gonna snap into clarity. Did you guys see that where it just kind of pops a little bit? gives you this really crystal clear picture. It's just designed to do that because it's saving bandwidth for the district. So uh, if it ever looks fuzzy and you, you're kind of like, oh, I don't want to do it, just, just touch it a little bit with your mouse. And honestly, like the mouse is your friend for this program. Uh, just understanding the, you know, the gestures uh, makes it really super easy. Like right now I'm doing kind of what's called a digital pan tilt zoom. So all I'm doing is basically just uh, hovering my mouse over a particular area and then as I wheel in it's going to just stay right on that target and then bring me that information that I need. So that's using the cursor tool. If I was going to back out back here and use the magnification tool I can basically just draw it in a box around an area and it's going to take me right into there. Same thing if I do the uh, zoom out tool. It basically brings me back to um, where I need to be. This hand tool is the, uh, the basically the, uh, the pan tilt zoom tool. So if I zoom in a little bit, uh, the hand tool grabs on, drags that back and forth so I can get that detail I'm looking for in that part of the scene. Uh, so I like the cursor tool the best. It seems to be, uh, for me, the easiest to navigate around. And actually, if I right click, I get the hand so that I can drag around and pan into the scene. So that's why I like the cursor tool the best, makes it pretty easy to work with. Uh, so right now I'm in live video, and uh, if I wanted to go recorded video, like I just saw somebody walk in, or this car drive up, um, I can switch to recorded video right now. So just clicking recorded brings me right to there, uh, to that last moment. So you can see it down here on the timeline, all this red area, that's where I have recorded video. You'll see where it kind of skips around because it's only recording on motion. 
So if I have an area, like if I zoom in here overnight, hopefully, there is an area where there is no recording, or you get like these, like your timeline looks like this, where it, it goes dark, right? And then there's all these little areas of motion. Uh, that's saving the, the, um, the storage on the machine. But when it, we have this uh, constant red, that's constant motion, meaning that it's always recording. Uh, I could, if I was in live view and I wanted to see if it was recording, I could look at this status symbol up here in the right top left corner. This is gonna tell me that the red dot, it's recording. Uh, if it's blue, it's recording on motion. If it's white, it's kind of on standby uh, or record on motion. So basically, now I'm in live view, skipping to record it. Clicking back to live view again, I wanted to show you that you can right click and open a menu that gives you some easy access options. So if I wanted to replay the last 30 seconds, I could do that. It's gonna help me understand quickly uh, how that car got there in the parking lot. It brings me right to recorded video. I replays that last 30 seconds. So if you just missed it, just go back 30 seconds, right? Pretty easy, one, one two clicks. Um, let's uh, understand a little bit more about some of the cameras that you guys might see. And uh, to do that, I wanna show you a fisheye camera and uh, what that looks like. So this is actually the Vigilant player. And I'm just gonna close this and reopen it for just a second. One second. So when we export video, uh, it's gonna go to a file and it's gonna look like this. We're gonna open it with the Vigilant player. And uh, this is from uh, the Lodge Casino up there in Blackhawk, but uh, this is a fisheye camera, and you got this is going to be installed, you know, pretty prevalent throughout the district because this camera actually is pretty powerful. It's very dynamic. It looks like a fisheye right now. Like it's also called a panoramic camera, uh, but you know this is just the raw image that comes out of the camera. But I'm going to show you what you can do with this camera just by zooming in. So you can see it dewarps the image and straightens it out for us, and then we can pan around 360 degrees with no blind spots underneath that camera. So whether you're looking uh, down a hallway, uh, at a particular door, all of those areas of interest uh, can be captured with no blind spot underneath the camera. So it's really like a PTZ, but it's always recording everything. Uh, and then a lot of people don't like that, it, you know, it kind of gives you this, or this warped image, but I can show you how you make this into four different cameras and basically from this one camera stream, I'm just holding down control and dragging this into these other frames. And now I can basically take that magnifying glass, say I wanna see uh, the, the, the bar on this side with this one. Doo, doo, doo. And uh, this side I wanna see over here, just zooming in, straighten this guy out. And maybe this one we wanna see over here. And then uh, this one, we need the door, right? So now I've got this one camera that's looking at 360 degree views uh, all the way around, no blind spots, but I've cut it into four different views. So now I can save this as a uh, save view and then come back to it and it's gonna look exactly like this. So uh, you don't get stuck with just that raw, like fisheye image. Any questions so far? Let's head back over to the client, and uh, let's go to focus. Of a, oh, go ahead. On the recorded sections, how far back will it go back? Two weeks, yep. three weeks? So the, uh, the, the district standard is 21 days. Uh, so that's, um, you know, including uh, bookmarks and stuff like that. We'll, we'll go over bookmarks next, right? Like, so uh, let's understand, like, um, you know, say something happens in the parking lot, we need to, you know, we saw something, you need to tell somebody about it, right? So we want to get a hold of our SO, our, our security staff, make sure that they understand that this white pickup wasn't supposed to be here this day. Uh, I can start by just zooming in on this pickup and then clicking on the camera view. This is saving a snapshot.
So say for instance, this black car showed up in the visitor parking, it's been uh, kind of there for like three, four hours, we don't know who, it's, who it belongs to. Uh, we can snapshot this by just clicking on the camera icon. And now it's opened another tab for me, and here's that car. I can now export this to my desktop and basically get this out to communicate to whoever I need to. So whether it's for your email or text, now I have this image that I can send out and say, hey, uh, start looking for the person that owns this car. Um, if I you know, need to take this video and uh, bookmark this, basically like you know, we, we don't know who dropped off this car, but you know, we want to uh, save the time that it showed up. Um, what I can do is just add a bookmark right now. So I can click on the timeline here, right clicking, add bookmark. What this does is it basically gives me these two uh, bookends that I can say, well, between these two bookends, I want to save this, uh, this video and call it something, right? So we might just say um, the uh, black car in visitor parking. I can put in a description like, uh, not sure whose car this is. And then I can click protect bookmark. But what happens when you protect a bookmark is it saves it on the server. So as the video goes through those 21 days, right? And on the 22nd day, it starts to overwrite. It goes back to the, the beginning and starts going again. That bookmark video is gonna stay on the server. So it's just gonna move back, right? Uh, but if you have a bookmark, uh, basically means that that's evidence, right? You wanna make sure that security knows about it that they can get it off the system, uh, save it for law enforcement. So that's really important uh, to make sure that you have that communication pathway um, and, and follow the procedure. Because essentially, if you fill up your server with all kinds of bookmarks and uh, they're not relevant or not useful, that's soaking up storage. That means that instead of 21 days, you might have 12 days of storage now because you got 10 days of bookmarks. Right? So uh, definitely making sure that you know bookmark processing is a process and a protocol. Um, and then if I needed to search on that, I can just go over to the hamburger menu, go over to bookmarks here, and then I can type in black car and find that bookmark. Uh, here we go. All right, and now I've got instant access to that. Uh, you know, uh, investigations can export that off the server, uh, save that for uh, you know, long-term law enforcement needs. So the other device that you guys are probably gonna get really comfortable with here is the intercom. So I've got one here on the desk up, up front. Uh, would you mind touching the button for me? I think you have one question on the book. Oh, yes. Um, in the past, when we had like sections of video that we would put like in a vault, it was really difficult to export that to law enforcement. So if they needed it for evidence, the process was arduous to say the least yeah. to get it out of the vault and into a file that they could then upload on their end yeah. when we bookmark is that easier or is there a process or can you demonstrate the process that it takes to yeah. move the desk that the export the will, export exporting will cover in the next section. okay okay yeah but uh, essentially it is pretty easy it, that was always we ended up having to take video off of our phones because and just give it to them that way rather than having to move it through yeah. our system because it was yeah. It was almost impossible. This is about three clicks. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> um, Don't worry. But starting with the bookmark, can you go ahead and touch that button for us? This is going to basically, you just walked up to the front desk. We're going to be able to, it's going to open that speaker audio connection so I can immediately hear what's going on. I can answer this and uh, start with the feedback. I can have that sticker there um, and then I can end that call. But basically, there's a couple other icons here. And so up here in the top left, next to that record button, is the trigger for the digital output. That basically allows me to unlock the door. So if I click that, it's now gonna unlock the door for that person uh, after I've verified who it is. This is another, uh, it's a three megapixel fisheye, so I can still zoom in, get really good detail about who that is, uh, whether you know they're close or far. I mean, we could probably even see kind of see what time it is, but that's pretty far for this camera. Um, but really pretty good detail. Uh, the whole idea being that you know we want to be able to verify who's outside 
uh, before we you know, open the door for them. So again, uh, we can open this right here, unlock that. In the bottom right, when we hover over the, the bottom corner here, we can open that uh, speaker and the microphone so they can hear me talking talk through the microphone, microphone on the speaker. And then I can also listen in uh, as they walk up to the door. So before they even touch the button, I can listen in on what they're doing. Excellent. So in order for the uh, to grab those intercom calls though, you're gonna have the client here open in the back. And then if you you know wanna you know start with your work day and have um, a, a browser open in front of it, you're welcome to do that. Cool. Um, let's uh, what are we doing on time so far? Uh, coming up on that half hour mark. Um, so all of these are Google embedded browsers. So even if I wanted to bring over like say uh, a website and have the weather uh, as one of my screens, I can do that. Uh, if I wanted to bring over my camera, I can do that as well. I can build a view for all my exteriors so maybe I have seven cameras that I need to take care of. Uh, let's add a couple more. I'll add another intercom on this side, one for the parking lot here, and uh, get this guy, and one more. How about this one? Oh, we can do another one. There we go. <clears throat> Excellent. So, this way, I'm building up kind of like all my exterior views. I've got my intercoms. Uh, I can see what's going on around my building. I want to save this view, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and save this as a new view, and we'll call it um, Exterior Junction. And we'll click OK. And say, for instance, you know, uh, I logged out of my machine, I came back, and um, you know, I need to get all those camera views open again. I'm just going to go down here and, oh, I'm not sure if uh, there's so much in there. I don't have time to look for it. In the search bar here, I can just type it in. And there we go. There's all my exterior junction cameras. Uh, it's going to pull up for me just the way I left it. There's another cool feature here called focus of attention. And this basically allows us to have a, a kind of a passive view of our cameras, right? Because the cameras have the AI built into them, and they're out there looking for anomalies. After about two weeks, they learn what's typical in a scene. And so if they all of a sudden see somebody cruising through the parking lot at two o'clock in the morning going the wrong direction, the camera wants to tell somebody about it. It's weird, right? Uh, if you've got 20 people you know, in the back of a room, it's gonna think that's weird too, especially at like three or four o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, the camera is basically always kind of cataloging what's normal and what's unusual. So when something unusual happens, it can bring it into this focus of attention interface, and we can hover over uh, some of these icons, and these little honeycombs represent cameras. So if, it, if it's gray, camera just, there's nothing going on, there's no motion. Blue is motion, and then these unusual events get detected here, and if I hover over this, it's gonna give me uh, exactly where that camera lies in the camera tree. So if I replay this video, just clicking here on replay, uh, I'm gonna find out what's going on. And you know, as a human operating a video system, like watching like a wall of video uh, where you've got like 12 different you know, uh, camera views open uh, is, is not doing anybody any good. Because after like 12 minutes, you miss 95% of what's going on. Uh, but you know, the smart cameras are here to bring you those anomalies so you can make a judgment call. Is this something I need to make a uh, communication about? How do I respond to this event? So this makes it really easy to you know, uh, start to understand some of the other things that you might have missed uh, that the video system <coughs> caught. So my whole operation here is, you know, if there's something here on the left side, I just wanna check it out. If it's nothing, I can move on. If it uh, requires my attention, I can you know, collaborate with somebody. So say for instance, um, you know, we wanted to know more about this blue pickup back here. And uh, you know, I, I wanted to ask Jeff about it. So here, if I click the collaborate button, which looks like a little person, it's gonna communicate with the other users on the system. And I can say, well, hey, um, is this the blue pickup you were looking for? 
because what's going to happen is they're going to get that invite request and uh, they're going to see exactly what's on my screen. It's going to mirror it completely. So we can be like, yep, that's the blue kit pickup. Okay, well, I'm going to click this next arrow. This opens this same video stream right at that same point in time. So I can zoom in on that pickup, take my picture, and then export that out to uh, whoever I need to. Right? It makes it pretty simple to uh, start working through that, that process. So we're going to close a couple of those up. This guy, this guy. And just like your web browser, you, I mean, you can have like six or eight tabs open. They're only going to refresh the, the cameras that you're looking at. Uh, so don't worry about like six or eight. But if you get like 26 tabs open, uh, it's probably time to close a few. <laughs> Let your uh, system operate a little bit better. Give it some more resources. Go ahead. Well, didn't zoom in on like a license plate number? It depends on the camera. Right? So uh, uh, cameras are often put in the, uh, the proper position so they can do exactly that. So if we have um, a camera in the right place to do the right thing, uh, it's going to be able to read those license plates for us at those, those choke points. Uh, a lot of the schools have been designed that way so that uh, if it's in like that area of transfer where um, you know, there's a bus or student drop off, we want to be able to read those plates in those areas for sure. Um, go ahead. Can you show again how you talk to the person? I saw where you slid to unlock the door, but I, I didn't see how you talked to the person. Yeah, uh, would you mind pressing the button again? Yeah. So now it's opened that view for us. So I can click answer right here, or I can ignore that call. So if I click answer, now it opens up that live two-way communication and uh, basically allows you to uh, open the door at that point as well. Cool. So that's kind of the basics. Uh, from this point, it gets a little bit more uh, um, in depth. Let's get walk back in. I think I lost my internet, maybe. Uh, there's a couple other things too, like you'll notice that I'm on dark mode. So if you go to uh, the little gear over here, client settings, this lets us choose whether if we wanted the display to be light theme or dark theme, uh, depending if you have the sun coming in and reflecting on your computer, you might prefer light screen uh, over the dark screen, but if you're in a want to go easy on the eyes, maybe, maybe uh, the display in the dark is better. So certainly options with the software. Uh, if we wanted to get to that user guide, uh, we can come back over here to the gear. Uh, we can go to user guide. That brings us the same help menu as if we went to the hamburger and then to the help. Um, and uh, went back to the same button, same place. So if we wanted to just get to, you know, uh, familiar with the system, we can click through some of these. It's going to give us these lessons again about how to find stuff. So, so far we've covered how to log in, how to get to live and recorded video, how to drag and drop a camera over, um, how to populate a view and save that view, and then how to answer the intercom. We looked at some of the fish eyes. Some of the other cameras that uh, you'll, you'll probably find in your systems are the multi-sensor cameras. So if we went to oh, parking lot, that camera out. How about that? Things change. Well, 
let's uh, let's go to this fish eye view, go to recorded video, and um, gosh, well, Jeff, I think this is uh, where we kind of want to break off here for a couple minutes, and then uh, give people a couple chance or a chance to take a break, and uh, we'll resume in like three minutes and kind of go over more of the investigative features. And uh, Jeff, I mentioned that this is kind of really that point where, um, you know, if you're not concerned about investigating with the system, I think you'd be free to go. Yeah, you're certainly welcome to stay as long as you as long as you like. Um, if you want to get into some of the investigation stuff, it's fine. We just want to be sensitive because again, I know everybody's got a lot of things going on at school. So that's the operator thing that we would expect from just kind of that front desk person. <laughs> Uh, being able to buzz people in and whatnot, so I think that's great. Uh, again, you're welcome to stay, but if you want to take a quick break, eat these donuts, be great. <laughs> Anything like that to stop me from doing it? Thank you, Thank you, Grover. So this is Andrew. This is Andrew. Sit at our sign ins change. There you go. Sign in. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
See, it looks like you just double click a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to go in and play with them so I can figure it out. You know, basically tomorrow, I'm trying to get the PAs sorted out first. And then we'll get that out. I'll hear that one later. Yeah. I was hoping we if we didn't know how they walk yeah yeah but, but you know um, from being around school you know what they wear and you know how they walk and, uh, you can be like okay I know yeah and then we open in a couple of for the high schools, particularly for like parking lots and stuff, there's like one really easy camera. It's like you know, 10 grand a pop. That's like coming. But we're going to have the Windsor guys parking lots. And that thing is like. Okay, hey, so if we can grab seats and get back, uh, did we miss anybody? Anybody waiting to come in? I know Carrie took off. Um, who else was there? Yeah, um, Linda. So Linda. 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 Okay, good. And Carrie. I think that's it. Okay. So Andrea brought up a good point. So some stuff to talk through. So if you guys remember with Genetech, um, you know, and I don't know if it's a security system, like just a, a widespread thing. PC is going to be the way that we want to be able to operate this. Now Andrea is connected back to uh, the original on cloud service, and so what happens is. When Kyle is going through some of these features, there are certain things that won't be available from the Mac. That would have to be from a PC client. Now, just your focus of attention, some of the appearance search you can't, but you'll be able to monitor cameras, you'll be able to save views, you'll be able to do things like that. What we've talked about is what do we do for schools that are more Mac-based. We delegate, Suzanne does everything. I think that's outstanding. We've tried to switch over for a while. Yeah. I won't switch. What's the Mac feature? Delegate. <laughs> Molly's, so, uh, Molly's it. <laughs> so as as we as we go through it though, as we go through it, I think one of the things we're trying to figure out is because I think it's going to be valuable for every school to have the client version loaded up. So whether that is something that we do with technology, you know, we we've talked about a virtual machine, you know, so on your Mac, do we have you log into a PC? Because you you can you can run that type of a client on a Mac. Or does it just make more sense for your environment to find a, a desktop computer that you can put as, a, as kind of in a, in a station spot? You can still view cameras and do things, but Andrea, if you got to a spot where you said, hey, I really need to investigate this, again, do we have you logging into a PC or do we have something set up? And I, we just haven't had that conversation yet as to what works best for Severance Middle. But yeah, exactly. Yes, ma'am. Um, in another district, we use the same system and the school could only do the 21 days back, but the district could go back Farther, 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 away. Um, is that true or no? Um, it depends. So, have, we, have you talked bookmarks yet? Okay, so those bookmarks and everything, so the, the board policy right now says 21 days. Um, as you know, we brought Craig in. Does everybody know Craig? Has everybody seen? Okay. So, as we brought Craig in, uh, in to start looking through that, you know, we may adjust and look at what that is. As, as it is, you know, we're not deleting the footage at this point. You know, we're not, you know, we have our new servers that are in place across the district in every school. So that is gonna hold enough stuff, you know, to cover that 21 days for sure. We don't have a delete policy on that at this moment. Again, is that something where Craig is like, hey, at day 22, I want it erased. But we'll, we'll, find, we'll figure out what that looks like. Those bookmarks are critical. So if we have investigations that are taking place, we bookmark that, that's not gonna get overwritten, that's gonna be available to you, so we can always go back and reference that. We can pull that down, we can get it off of the server, put it on the desktop, share that as we need to. So there's a lot of options that we've got that ideally happen inside of 21 days. But yeah, Suzanne, as far as, as what we're gonna do or when we're gonna start axing data, you know, I, I don't have that answer. 21 days is boring. Okay, thank you. 
And can you clarify what aren't we going to be able to do on the Mac with it? So when you look at, so can you bring up the yeah. focus of attention? Uh, So this focus of attention pain, so when we were talking about some of this and these things pop up over here, this won't be available on just the, 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 web, the, the web version, so just from your, from your browser. Um, if you're doing some investigation, so that apparent search, and if, well, I don't know that we've got into a bunch of that, but an apparent search or you know, different tracking and things like that, the Mac, because it's just the, it's the cloud version of, of what it is. Okay. So when we have that PC in there, then you get kind of the full, full access to all the things that the client can do. So again, you know, that's something that we can certainly visit about, you know, especially for those schools that are just primarily Mac. You know, what's the solution that works best for you? We'll take that to technology and figure that out. You know, whether that's us buying some licenses to get those virtual machines up so you can easily log into it, or if it's buying a different computer, you will figure out a solution. You know, I don't want to make the call because it's your school, so what's your environment support? What makes the most sense for you? We can have that conversation and, and figure that out. But by this time next year, Jeff, uh, Jeff like searching should be uh, pretty much the same on either. Right, so there you go. Yeah. So, so it's good to know, so that's coming. It's just that this, when we roll out, so here in a week, you know, this is what we'll be uh, dealing with, so. Yes, ma'am? I don't know if I missed it. On when someone rings the doorbell, does it have to be up on this screen? Or if I'm on the other, like doing something else, will it give me some notification that someone's at the door? Or do it have to be up yeah. in this so location? typically it's gonna um, give you a, an audio notification, like if like the doorbell's ringing, you hear that, you know, like dial tone type of noise. Um, but you wanna have the client open in the back you can often, you know, you can open a browser on top of it, uh, or you can put it on another screen. And if you hit Control N, uh, then you can have another screen too that you can put it on a separate second monitor too, if you have. That's one of the things that we have talked about is the addition of this to have these up because we only really had that one view, you know, so we're kind of looking outside, so that was easy. You know, now we're talking about just more things that we can monitor and, and keep, you know, keep our eyes on. Do we need a second monitor? You know, do we need a third monitor? You know what? What is that environment going to look like? That's some of the stuff. So again, I'm, I'm going to start visiting schools tomorrow afternoon. Spend a couple hours at each location. You know, the idea is going to be let's dive into your environment and let's see what it is that you need. We won't be able to solve everything right then, but if we're working together, we should be able to have a running list of things that we can address. You know, we can take the technology, take to Craig, figure out what we need to do to make your environment really take advantage of this. You you won't start you won't start day one without what you had day one last year. Or I guess last day last year, you'll have all that same functionality and features. But the idea is, is that we're going to build on this, and we want to tailor it to your schools because these retrofits are unique based on our schools. You know, I mean, from Severance Middle School, uh, Rangeview, you know, back down to Tozer, you know, and then uh, Mountain View. So some of the older schools versus the newer schools. What does your environment need? What can we do? And let's let's address that stuff and get it taken care of. Will that intercom camera work on that? Um, it should pull up. I mean, it's going it's to be yeah, a lot of so, yeah, Once absolutely. they have their visual on cloud log in it, there's actually a, an app that you can put on your phone that would give you two-way communication through the app. So it would go to your visual on cloud log in. And we're not with that app um, on the phone yet, but yeah, as far as that uh, cloud service, whatever, you, if, you, if you're monitoring that, that will pop up and you'll be able to see that. One of the cool, I don't know if you guys have dealt with that, so Carrie, you know, over at Windsor High School at the activity hall, they would come up and they would, you know, put their hand over, over that or they'd put a card there and she couldn't see, she didn't know what's going on. What we really like about this is that it's an actual camera. And so if somebody's being a jerk or doing something like that, you can actually just replay it, replay the last 30 seconds and show me who walked up, you know. And so we're able to do that from, you know, with this system right here. So I think that intercom is a cool, a cool feature that we're going to be able to take advantage of. Especially in some of our buildings without line of sight, you know, where you can't see what's going on, you know, at a lot of schools like that here, I think, right now, so. Excellent. Thanks. Fantastic. Anything else? Are all of those off, Jeff? No. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> hey, I've got four days. I've got four days. <laughs> I'm not pressuring you. I was just like, I'm, we don't have to keep our days. The, you know, the, the idea was, so as we talked through it, the idea was that elementary schools would have these intercoms up right away, like for the, the start of the school year, with our secondaries, middle school and high schools coming shortly thereafter. Um, it's a process when you start talking about, you know, a penetration on the wall. Where does that fit? You know, yeah, I think about a range view. You know, we've got that post out there. You know, where can we put that? You know, there's there's different things that we need to look at, like what makes the most sense. So, as we've worked with Radio Resource, uh, the company that's doing the installs. 
we're trying to figure out you know what's our best path and really bang for our buck we've got a limited amount of time what can we get done elementary schools are going to have interior campus that was a focus of craig's so we're going to have that taken care of those video intercoms ideally will be up as well our elementary should be pretty pretty good you know as, as close to complete as we can get and then the secondaries you know because they've had uh, an existing structure we'll walk in and we'll work on those schools together so you know let's let's get the intercom first you know, Susanna, if you like, hey, let's let's get the intercom now. Let's make that a focus. Then we'll have our crews working on that first, and then let's replace a couple of cameras or do whatever we need to do. So we can tailor it again to your school to what's going on. But yeah, by the first day of school. So we're, <laughs> we're starting. I've got eight days. Yeah, we're starting with what we left off with at the end. No less than that. That's correct. Perfect. You'll have no less than that. And I again, just, Shelley, for, for your school, you know, you'll be in a spot where you actually will have interior cameras, which you didn't have last year. Right. And ideally, this video intercom as well. So with those things functioning, you'll have what you had last year and then some. And a PA system. And a PA system. Yeah. At a fixed eight days. I have eight days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What are you even doing? Yeah. Exactly. I'm just, I'm just relaxing. Just just program card. <laughs> it's a good time. Fantastic. Well, um, in this picture, you guys can see cars going by, right? Does anybody see the little blue lines around the cars? Mm -hmm. That's our classified object detection bounding box. And so what that means is that the computer, the AI, has determined that's actually a car. And it's recorded the general descriptors that go with it. So it's basically in uh, attaching the text to go with this video, saying that this is a white pickup, this is a black car, uh, you know, we've got a white Jeep. It's collecting all those different things. And for people, it's collecting their hair color, their um, upper body clothing color, and uh, their lower body clothing color, their age, which is basically just represents size. So we can basically search on all these general descriptors and find out where somebody went across our entire site. So I can also search on a vehicle, same deal, and looking for uh, you know, the color of the car, the size of the car, the type of vehicle. I can also search on image. So if I have an employee badge picture ID, I can go and find that person across my facility because we're searching on similarities, uh, but that's the first step, is recognizing that we're doing classified object detection. The next step is what we do with that. So if we are looking at event-based analytics, meaning that we're looking for somebody crossing the fence, um, like when uh, you know somebody jumps the fence into the playground, right? We can alert on that, but we need to know that there's a fence back there, right? We need to start having everybody think about, well, what happens under these cameras? that if I knew about, I could program in there and the next time it happens, I can be in that proactive position. Uh, that could be everything from you know, somebody driving the wrong way down the bus lane, it could be somebody jumping the fence, it could be somebody going to the playground after hours. Right? Like all these different kind of things we need to start communicating to our security staff so that they can uh, start programming those into the system. So there's, uh, like this one, object enters area. Uh, here we, in the camera, we drew a geofence box and said that anytime somebody drives into the visitor parking with a car or uh, you know a, a bus or a bicycle, tell me about it, right? So that gives the front desk just a little bit of extra time to know that somebody's approaching. So if it's like between, like say, uh, after general admission, everybody's been taken in and they've gotten to their classroom, now, you know, who's supposed to be walking up to the building? Like basically nobody, right? Uh, maybe a, a couple stragglers gives you this uh, great idea that, hey, I've got somebody walking up to the building, I know I can verify that person on the intercom view, and uh, I can open the door for them, right? Or I could start talking to them, uh, start turning them around the other direction. So the whole idea with the video, video or the event-based analytics is to bring that information to the right people when they need it, so they can make a decision about what to do with it. So uh, if you see something, say something, that's always a pretty critical piece of the uh, Security chain. Go ahead. So, like those settings, would that be done on one computer, one person's account, or is yep. multiple people have access to set those areas up? Yeah, so it's going to be, uh, I think, at the school level, for the investigators are probably going to have the, uh, the ability to put in these uh, video analytics uh, so that they can get programmed and get that notification out. So, I think it's going to be local. You guys probably want to make sure that you're communicating about 
what's getting put into the system so that when you see an alert come through, you know what it's about, right? So uh, that's also a critical piece about this, just not you know, putting in somebody, like a line, calling something line cross doesn't really help anybody because they don't know if it's in the front of the school, the back of the school, or if it was in the gym, right? So you wanna be very descriptive about how you call these things so that when it pops up, you know exactly where to respond. Um, so that's one thing we can do. Another one is, um, uh, you know, with focus of attention and even being in a uh, proactive position, we might, you know, find out that we're human and we miss something. So there's a couple searches I wanna show you about. So if I go to recorded video here, just clicking on recorded, that opens up a search tab for me right here. And I can go to say like um, a thumbnail search. Now I can pick out a particular camera that I wanna do a thumbnail search on. I can hover, maybe it's this one. Not the, this is the one I wanted, right? So doing a thumbnail search basically allows me to search in between a timeline. That's like, a, what time is that? That's like a year ago. Let's get back over here. So I'm just going back in. I'm just holding my mouse over where I want to zoom in on. And it's getting closer and closer. And you'll see these bookmarks here. I'm going to pull these in. And I'm going to search from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. to find out what time this car got here. Right? It's been here like a long time. Like, what's up with that? Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to take this area of interest, narrow it down, drop it right over the car, and search. And now it's returning these evenly spaced images across the timeline. So now I found out between 7.09 and 7.38, this car showed up. It's cool, that's only like 29 minutes of video for us to watch, right? You guys, cool? You guys cool with that? Yeah. No, that's horrible. Yeah. We don't wanna do that. That's a ridiculous waste of time. Let's just, uh, let's just double click on the car here. And now, now it's zoomed in on the timeline a little bit closer. So you can see that these green things like H that responds to the H down there on the timeline. We found out between 709 and 714 the car showed up. Five minutes. Better, not good enough. Here we go. We've got 70927, 71004, pretty close. Oh, there we go. This looks interesting. I'm just right clicking here. Right clicking brings me right into this view so I can go up and down the timeline now, I can play this video, find out exactly what happened, right? So within like a minute, I found exactly what the information I needed when this car showed up and who, who it belongs to. It gives me a really great way to just, uh, instead of sitting there, you know, and trying to scrub up and down the timeline, like, like when did this guy get here? I don't know, you know, like, uh, none of that, right? We're just using thumbnail search to look for these static changes. So it's good for car in the parking lot, graffiti on the wall, um, you know, uh, a missing backpack, that type of thing, right? So that's when you would want to use thumbnail search. And what it's basically doing is just returning back those images uh, evenly spaced across the timeline. Any questions about thumbnail search? Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, we're gonna go search for an event uh, for a motion event and we're going to search for a classified object so I'm going to go to a particular camera here uh, I think the uh, landscaping crew showed up you know the guy with the, the black car is reporting that he's got you know dings all over it now he thinks the mower ran over some rocks or something um, so we're going to find out exactly what happened we're going to go to this courtyard view and um, kind of like thumbnail search I'm gonna narrow down this area of interest. So every time I pull one of these dots, it gives me two other dots, so I can make a very uh, you know, deliberate shape about what I wanna search in. So those classified object boxes, you know, those little blue boxes, I'm looking for when you know, the, the guy with the mower came through, this park, or through the grass and started kicking rocks in my car, right? So uh, I can zoom in on this a little bit, and um, I'm looking for the bottom of this blue bounding box to touch this, uh, this geofenced area. So now, let's see, I'm gonna get my time straight here. I think today is probably good. 
So we'll search all day for today. And if this was a motion search and it has trees or a flag waving in it, if you searched on pure motion on a system, I mean, you're gonna get thousands of results. That's crazy, right? I'm searching for just the classified objects, the people or the vehicles. So I got three results. So now I can play these, find out when, there, when somebody, uh, there we go, right? Found it right away. There's my, my guy on the mower. So now I can take this video and uh, I can click on this, click on the dude. And so I'm just left clicking and now I can do find appearances before this or after this. So I'm clicking on after and now it's taken this image and it's searching all of the video analytic cameras and returning back pictures from all across the, the facility about the dude with the mower, right? So I can add these, I'm gonna star them and it's starting with 15 minutes. Right, so I'm going to start adding these to my timeline. And the other thing that's happening here is when I star these images, when I you know, say that this is what matches my description, it's telling the AI that's the description. Find me better images that match that description. So now I can basically search through, uh, there he is at another camera, right? So we can uh, play this one. And then, you know, he's pretty far back there. I found him. Uh, maybe maybe we need to add this one to the storyboard. Uh, we'll add that as well. This bar tells me that ah, I've got matches out farther down the timeline. I can extend my search. So now you can watch the down here on the bottom. It's updating that as well. So uh, we'll add this one, this one. Here he is again. Uh, we'll add those. And I can also narrow my search down to per camera. So you guys are probably, you know, some of these schools are pretty big. You've got like cameras all over the place, right? So if you know your camera layout, you can now make that search per camera rather than having to go through all those images, right? So we can say, yep, here he is at this camera, close that one up. Here he is at this camera, got him, this one, yep. Uh, let's add this one to the timeline. And uh, a couple more, I think we should have it. There we go. So we'll start all those. And you see how it's added these little bubbles down here on the timeline? Those are all those little videos uh, showing us that, you know, this is the video clip that we want to add to our file. So now that I feel like my investigation is pretty complete, I can click on the export button. This takes us to our export tab. And now if I click on this, it's going to show me that I have all these different little clips that I can play back to back to back. <coughs> Even if I need to make this one a little bit longer, I can do that right here adjust that. I can make sure that this clip is uh, the same that I'm, I'm looking for. I can make that a little bit longer. Uh, maybe down here we need to make this one a little bit longer too. All right? And then I can still, you know, go up and down the timeline, seeing the video. Maybe I, oh, there he is. I'm going to add, make this one a little bit longer. Bring this one over here. All right? So if I need to prove the case, uh, I'm going to have all that video to back me up. And even if I you know, have other video that I need to export and put in the same file, I can just drag and drop that file right into this file so that it all exports as one. So I click export, uh, This I get the California question, say yes, and then basically it's gonna tell me where, you know, what um, drive, uh, <coughs> evidence drive I wanna put this on, and then it's gonna save it there in the Avigilon format, which is authenticated Right, so the police, when they take this to court, can make sure that they can prove that it hasn't been tampered. Um, from that evidence drive, though, that's where you would have to download it from uh, and burn it to a CD or a thumb drive, or uh, you guys might have a shared drive with the PD that you could, uh, you know, they might have access to the same drive. Okay, so there's a couple different ways to address that. It makes it really pretty simple. Excellent. Any questions, or does anybody want to see another example of appearance search? Did you guys notice how we did that with uh, just looking for that classified object, clicking on it, and then finding that person before or after that? That's going to save you guys so much time trying to find somebody walking around the building, uh, not having to scrub video all the time. Oh, you can see much better. <laughs> Absolutely. So, actually, let's. 
Let's just go to uh, another way to, get, or to uh, access any of those searches. So if I clicked on the hamburger button over here, uh, I can basically start with appearance search, and I can start with an image here, and uh, I can up, upload a file. Uh, we'll choose this one, and uh, let's see. Let's, uh, let's pick out some cameras. Search that. There we go. So it's working on it, right? It, like it found the bowling ball. Um, but the whole idea is that you can, you know, search from a couple different ways, right? In a Vigilon, there's pretty much three ways to do just about anything. So if I showed you one way and somebody does it a different way, it's because you can, right? So it's it's pretty easy. So if I needed to, you know, find out how to do that appearance search, I could go back down here to help. Uh, type that in, uh, give some you know quick instructions about how to do that as well. Um, Jeff, we covered exporting a little bit. Do you feel like that uh, you want to talk more about it, or um, what's what, what the procedure that if somebody finds evidence, what do they do? Yeah, you know, at this point, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I think last year we had kind of different processes going, you know, at different schools, you know, different ways that we were investigating and gathering and doing. Um, I think the introduction of Craig says that we'll probably be streamlining. Um, so what does that look like? I really can't, I can't, I can't share with you because I don't know. Um, but the idea, again, would be is that we streamline a process, that we have a way that we're doing things. Uh, we have no SROs here, right? Um, so again, the, we, we had a couple this morning that we were talking, you know, talking stuff through. They've got different limitations as far as what we can share with them as police officers, you know, just behind student privacy and, and the different things that we can do. And so there, there will be a process that we follow. So as we export who we share with, some of the cool stuff that I've seen, you know, and I think uh, Kyle will get into it is being able to bookmark something and share it with like a staff group. So if we've got seventh middle school, you know, and those are the, uh, the people that are looking at cameras, we can bookmark and do that and investigate together. Um, and then we decide how do we want to export that? What do we want to do with that? You know, but I think at some level, it'll be a building based thing that will escalate district at some point if need be. Uh, that would be the way that I would anticipate it to go. But again, I'm not 100% sure on how Craig wants to handle that. But again, from day one, I say we just continue to do what we do, just using the tools that we've got here. Yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, let's kind of build on uh, that intercom theory, right? Like you got somebody who's uh, walked up and uh, pressed the intercom, and uh, they held up uh, their card in front of it, right? How do, how do we manage that situation? So um, let's pull the intercom open, right? And say, for instance, uh, Say it's blocked right now, but we need to go back to that 30 seconds. Now I just I right clicked on that and went straight to the, the recorded view. And uh, we can play that. And it's gonna give us exactly what was happening at that moment. So we can basically, you know, zoom in, is that the right person? Uh, you know, get that image right there. Uh, and then, you know, verify that's the right person, right? All right, well, this is an event, right? Like this guy is being onerous. Uh, I want to save this video and uh, communicate with it, right? I want to be able to um, collaborate with one of my teammates. So I could hit the collaborate button here and then I could share it with this person. They're going to get that message. Do you want to collaborate? And uh, if they click yes, they'd be able to see my screen. And uh, here we could just say, yep, that's the dude. We're going to snapshot that. And uh, what if we need to, you know, find out where that person came from, uh, you know, how they got into this image? We can go to the surrounding cameras, and if we close this guy up, I'm going to pull up this camera right here next to me, and um, you know, do the apparent search from right there. So we could basically go to recorded video here, play the last 30 seconds, and that's the thing is that. Re uh, appearance search works on recorded video so at this point now I can search before this find out how this person you know, uh, showed up here because this camera view is pretty limited you it was only that one camera so I got to return any results I would expect that. Um, but essentially you know the, the whole idea is you know I want to have this evidence 
available. So now I just go down to my uh, timeline here and I can right click on it. Oh, did they, they denied the collaboration system. What are, what are they doing? All right, so I'm gonna add the bookmark. Maybe they're busy, they're probably on the phone. Um, I'm gonna you know, narrow this down. So now I can tell that, well, I've got 49 seconds of video here and uh, I can name this bookmark like um, Intercom Dude. And then, um, next one. Will we get in trouble if we name things yep. not professional things? Depends on who you're sharing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you're sharing sure with me, you're in. So, <laughs> so, if we want to collaborate from the, the intercom, yes. if my admin don't have this running in the background, mm -hmm. does it still send them a message or no? Nope, they would need to be live logged in they on the system to, to do a collaborate. In. Okay. Yep. Jeff, um, can we share that with SROs? Um, Is there going to be a way maybe through an app or? So again, that's where it gets a little bit, uh, I don't know the right way to say it. I mean, there are SROs, and so we want to be able to work right hand in hand with them as much as we can. But because of, you know, I don't want to call it limitations, but just because of, of, of privacy of students and whatnot, we have to make sure that we're following the right process. Right. So, but like if yeah. it's a stranger, right? I, I would doing I would something weird them. at the door that we might yes. be able to send that to them. I don't know why we wouldn't be able to. So anything like that that's happening on a campus that would require SROs to be alerted, that makes sense to me. Like if if we would alert the police force, then that would make that would make right. sense. Let's share that with SROs right now. Uh, as it relates to students, is where we start to get right. into a, a little bit of gray area where I don't understand. That's a lot of legal yeah. stuff to read that I'm not taking the time to do. Yeah, you're so, glad that's not part of your job. Right. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. So this is a detail about bookmarks that everybody needs to adhere to, is that this protect bookmark data, this little button right here, makes it so that the bookmark stays on the server. So, uh, like I talked about, how it would just roll over. Uh, you need to make sure that, that if this is evidence, click Protect Bookmark, right? And then tell somebody about it so they can export it off the server so you don't lose that evidence. But essentially, if it's just, uh, you know, like an event or something like that, or, you know, uh, just something you might, you thought was funny that day, like the sun came up the wrong direction, uh, you can bookmark that and, um, you know, it, it'll get wiped off in, in time. And Suzanne, you can name that whatever you want. <laughs> Excellent. So the next piece is basically how do we get the camera to know what we what we want to tell us, right? We want to program in an analytic event. So rather than that camera, let's go to this pro camera. And really quick, Kyle, before yeah. you before you do that, I, I mean, I want you to go through and everything. So when I looked at, when we looked at the Vigilon system, this is one of the big things for me. You know, this analytic event, and I was being able to track uh, kind of the way Kyle is gonna show you here in a minute, was one of the reasons that, you know, Vigilon just really stood out to us. Because there's a lot of gaps that we've got security-wise, district-wide, you know, and again, as you're talking about different buildings, you're talking about unique situations that occur. You know, what, what Kyle is gonna show you, Severance Middle School jumped out. <coughs> Sorry to keep using Severance Middle as the reference point. I, I mean, Toes are Mountain View actually as well because of the open campus there, but I'm thinking specifically about Severance Middle and a community that's right across the street and there is zero fence, there is zero anything. We have no way of, of stopping anybody. We want to put a fence up, we want that to be more secure. What we're going to be able to do, and Kyle will show you here, is we can actually, through the cameras, create an analytic event that says if we see this, you know, whether that's a motion one way or however we want to tag that, it's going to be able to alert us. And so we may not be able to address the situation completely, but at least we're going to be able to address the situation. You know, there still a, is a long-term fix that I want to see us do, but this gives us something that we can actually put into play right away. Yeah. So Kyle, please, without yeah. further ado. So we're going to set this up in the camera. I'm just right-clicking, going to device setup. What I need to do is set up an analytic event first in the camera. So I'm doing three different things. I'm gonna set up an analytic event. I'm gonna set up a rule that triggers off that analytic event, and then we're gonna test it. So there's a couple different analytic events I can add here. I'm gonna click add and make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see. And uh, the first thing I need to do is start with a title. So let's call this um, Tuesday, right? Uh, 
there's multiple different analytic events that we can trigger. There's objects in area. This basically means that uh, if somebody were to walk into this geofenced area and uh, was classified as an object, that basically means as soon as that classified, uh, that blue bounding box touches this yellow line, it's going to trigger that event. Um, object loitering, if something is, you know, like in the dock for too long or something like that, or like uh, people are hanging out by the garage or whatever, uh, that you draw the box around, if it goes past, say, 30 seconds, uh, then you can trigger a rule and communicate about it. Uh, object crossing beam, this is for that uh, time that somebody you know uh, walks in and jumps the fence and you know half their they're halfway to the school next thing you, you know right so this is basically going to give you that warning somebody's here uh, crossing the fence uh, object not present in the area you could draw this around the snowplow snowplow disappears it's going to tell you about it um, object enters area we did that one direction violated this would be great if we put this like uh, and the, where the bus drop off is. And somebody keeps driving the wrong way, right? Like we wanna tell that person to quit. Uh, here, if they're going the opposite direction of the arrows, we're gonna get a notification. So I can take this arrow, turn it all the way around, um, basically make sure that you know, I'm getting the, uh, the direction correct. So let's start with um, the object crossing beam. Do, do, do. There, go. there it is. And so now if I wanted to say, well, if they're going that way, tell me about it. I can easily flip this around with the reverse direction. So now I can say, you know, tell me about that direction. I could also do both directions. Uh, but real simple, uh, we're just gonna look for people going uh, from right to left. And then uh, we got that, we're looking for people and vehicles, perfect. Number of objects, I could say, well, if one, one person can do it, that's fine. If there's two people, tell me about it, right? So, We'll say okay, and that's perfect. Love that part. Um, all right, so we've got this. Yeah, here yet. So I set one up earlier that reports to focus of attention, but we're going to see how you know what the next step is. We're going to write that rule. So I'm going to the site. Uh, here I've got uh, choices to make an alarm or to make a rule. And the rule is basically a wizard. It's an if and then do statement. So I can look for this video analytic event started. I want to start there. And um, it's going to give me this blue text. So this is the if. When, I'm going to click on this guy, uh, Tuesday and under the bleachers uh, happens. And line uh, cross never summer. There we go. I want all those on this particular camera. Because you guys have so many cameras, you definitely want to pick out the camera that you're looking for. That's going to help the system search. And then uh, the next part is the do statement, right? So if this happens, do this. I could make it play a sound, send an email, uh, start a focus of attention uh, interface. I can create a bookmark. All this stuff uh, can happen automatically. So uh, that sound, we've got all these different sounds. I can be aware some of these are pretty loud. Um, the alarms are really annoying. The bells, not so bad. Uh, so once you play one of those, you know, that's, that's pretty innocuous. Uh, it, you might start cluing in on that means that somebody's approaching the building or something, right? <coughs> so there we go. So now we've got, uh, we're going to take off the email part. And um, we'll click next. Uh, digital input, output, you guys probably won't be dealing with. But then we want to definitely add a... Um, a name to this. We're going to call this one under the bleachers. And then we can attach a schedule to this. So we could say, well, you know, that happens normally during the day, all day, all week long during the school day, right? But if it happens after school, that's a problem, right? We want to know about it. So if we put, put it on that schedule, it's basically only going to happen outside of after hours. There we go. Close. Now the last part, testing it. So we're going to close this guy up, and we'll go to the focus attention interface. We're going to get rid of all these guys because uh, we're not worried about what's happening in Texas right now. There we go. All right, so let's, uh, here we go. There's our 
pro camera. And let's walk in and see what happens. All right, seems like nothing, right? But let's go check on focus of attention. And it should be delivering us that line cross information here in just a second. If not, we need to go check our rule and figure out where we what we did to, to went wrong. So I'm gonna make it one or one more trip around the horn. system today. All right, well, I'm going to have to go back to my rules, figure out what I did wrong. Going back to rules, going back to that one that, um, what did we call it? Under the bleachers. Oh, under the bleachers, there we go. Edit. So when the line cross started on that camera, play the bell for all users, device linked to the event. There we go. Next. 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 Okay. Well, I guess that proves why it's important to test it, right? Make sure that you got it right and uh, that it's in the system and it does what you're looking for. So sometimes you might need a, a, some help getting that uh, into the system, but pretty easy to work with. Uh, and then uh, if you also need help with that, uh, security staff here or the, uh, the help menu can certainly help you as well. Fantastic. So Jeff, we're coming up on 225. Yeah. Uh, do we want to open for questions? Yeah, I think that probably makes the most sense. Okay. I think we've covered the, the gist of the system there. Fantastic. Um, we did thumbnail search, classified object search, appearance search. We talked about focus of attention, uh, adding a video analytic and a rule. Um, did you do that analytic? Did we get that to work? Um, not yet. You want to look at that rule real quick and I'll just I'll check there? Oh. I'd, like, I'd like to see that and everything. Yeah. Further that would go. Okay. Yeah. My camera was having a communication issue. I've been having yeah. this with my switch. No. So it could be. This morning was good. Yeah. And it maybe set a few. I have the cable that I know is what me and you wanted to get this figure out. Yeah. Um, what, can I, what can I answer for you guys then, really quick? From, from a district side of things, I think again with Kyle showing you the, the functionality, the the analytic stuff, the, you know, basically, is that me? Yeah. All right. We are going to push it out to our... <laughs> so, um, what, once we have the client software and everything like that, we'll have that loaded to the, to the app server and then it's an easy download. Um, so Sawyer can take care of you guys at your building. Get it taken care of and loaded and then we'll be good. Um, it's important to know that, so again, for the high school and middle schools uh, specifically, you've got that older technology that we've had in there. And we're not replacing that because again, from Craig's perspective, getting cameras inside the elementary schools was, was a focus because we had zero coverage. You know, where at least at the middle school and high schools, we did have some coverage. You know, we want better cameras. We have a lot of expectations of what the system can do, but we needed to make certain that we replaced elementary, we, we installed elementary cameras first. Bond went through, boards approved, all that stuff is done. We're, we're through that, our phase two we expect to complete by the end of this calendar year. So all of the cameras that you've got that are those Samsung or, or Hanwha cameras that you see will all come out. So Andrea, when we look at quality of camera, when we talk about all the, the those better cameras are gonna be installed. But again, when I come and I sit down at Severance Middle or wherever, let's talk about what do we wanna see first. And so that way I can direct the, that crew to install. Um, door sensors are, are something we didn't talk on that but the door sensors are something that we're not going to deal with right away because that's gonna take a lot of wiring. Again, I think bang for buck. You know, we wanna make certain getting cameras, getting quality, getting, getting these things in as soon as we can is the most advantageous. 
elementary schools, again, will open as close to complete as, as anybody will. Uh, there'll probably be some things that we need to do specifically on the exterior. We've replaced the older cameras with the newer cameras, but we've put no additional cameras outside yet because that requires a penetration into the building. So what does that look like? Where are we running that cable to? That installing that camera takes hours where you know running a wire and installing an interior camera takes maybe half an hour. So getting that stuff done is, you know, it's what we're trying to do as much as we can. So elementary schools, again, as close as you'll be by the first day of school. Yeah, maybe. When will the halos go live? Halos are actually should be being installed. They're installed right, right now, speak. and I can see them on the camera system, but when will we be trained on how to run them? Yeah, that's outstanding. I, I haven't got the update yet. I've been, I've been I was PA only yesterday. This is unknown model, Halo. Yeah. I don't know, so. So those Halo sensors are being installed now. So Halo sensors, middle schools and high schools are, that's bait detection. And so what we're going to do with that, right now, Radio Resources is working through all of our radios. We've got certain radios, if you think about the ones that have the button on the top, I think it's that yellow button. Those are the ones that are connected to what's called Orchestrate. So Orchestrate is the system that's going to sit over the top and send alerts to our, our radios, send alerts to really if we want emails, however we want to manage that is what we'll do. My thought is day one, those halo sensors will send an alert that will go to uh, a, a radio group. So whoever we deem as, you know, they've got that radio, let's send it there so we can respond. You know, respond to vape uh, in, in a bathroom or something. Now the, the catch, Andrea, is that we've got a hundred and I think we, we ordered 141 and we ended up not because we, we included staff bathrooms we said just give me something for every bathroom we said no we're not putting them in staff but locker rooms instead of one we're gonna put two because the square footage is bigger so I'm not sure where we settled but it's probably 120 plus uh, halo sensors they each take an hour or two to program so that's a bit of time so when we go through what we're gonna say is okay what are your priorities what I need I need names of bathrooms so in the same way we name our cameras what's the name of that bathroom that's going to make sense to you and then what are your hot spots let's make sure we bring those online first um, you know my expectation would be uh, you know three to five bathrooms per element or uh, per middle and high school you know that we get those online right away and then the rest are coming but it's just a, it's just a matter of, of hammering out the programming to get that done Perfect. thanks long answer to your question yeah that's first, that's first that's there we go what else Because it's after lunch, right? Everybody's tired. We need to play with it. I won't be like, John, John, John. <laughs> um, and, and you know, really quick with that. <laughs> so, Jay, I, I, I've done a lot over this summer. There's been a lot of stuff that I've been responsible for. Um, you know, it's we're going to have a little bit of growing pain in this, and so just a little bit of patience as we figure it out. I was saying, you know, earlier uh, this morning. And my familiarity with Genetech was you know, a decade. You know, I, I had a lot of, of comfort level of what I'm doing. I'm learning this kind of on the fly with y'all. So I've had some training to this point. I feel pretty confident in what I know, but there's gonna be things, you know, where Kyle's like, you know, he can zoom through some of those things. It's gonna take me longer. Um, so as we work through those systems, you know, those things together, it really helped me prioritize a list of what, what do we need to tackle first? What do we need to do? You can email me, but I'm by my email. It's a, it's a bit jammed. Um, uh, tickets are the best thing for me right now because tickets will keep it top of mind. If it's an email, it can be on page three by the afternoon and then I'm not gonna see it. So put in a ticket for me if you don't mind and if it's urgent, call me. You know, my phone is on and so I'd rather get a text or a phone call because I'll respond to that. Uh, email is probably my least favorite. Just stay away from that probably. Probably until <laughs> That'd be great. Just yes, ma'am. The camera in the gym area, because mm -hmm. that's a common area. That's yes. always running, just because the teacher in that room might want to. Yeah, so what we'll do, Shelly, and again, it's, I'm not sure if we've set up the policies on it again. Under the Genetech system, and I believe we've done the same thing here, we're recording no less than a frame per second for every camera because we, we had a situation actually at Mountain View that occurred where we, we lost something because motion stopped, and so for whatever reason, it stopped recording and we missed an event. So at that, and that was years ago, and we said, okay, we're, we're recording a frame per second all the time. So okay. those cameras that really, anyone that we install anywhere is gonna have that. Okay. With this system, it's uh, the, the motion detection, is, gosh, it's so much better. You okay. know, the clarity is so much better. There's so many more things that we're gonna do for this. Okay. We may scale and play and do, but in those common areas, because they're larger, uh, I, don't, I don't see us getting away from at least a frame per second to where okay. we constantly got visibility yeah. to it. 
What else? Okay, that's great. And we're, are we, we're in 4230? Spot on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, I, I want you to know my football guys would be really proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> I am overconfident with football, so yeah, get you guys out of here. Um, as you come up with questions again, uh, as I visit your schools, let's work on that Google sheet together. So put those things in, we'll prioritize it, we'll knock that stuff out. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it looks like uh, that meeting is scheduled from 8 to 10 tomorrow. It's all good. Thank you, Jeff. You guys have a great day. Thank you. We can actually take a look. Yeah, let's go. Have a good one. Yeah. 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 Take, a, take all of them. That's all I can do. I'm already I'm not saying you can eat them all, Steve. Just take them something. End of summer. End of summer. <laughs> I'll be right there. You guys don't want to ask us. You will ask.
good stuff. I'm happy. I'm happy with it. I just got talking about the
Hey, Martin, how are you? Oh, nice. Not unless they bought it for your pitch line. It's not going to work in the negative count like that, like a mustering or a So one thing you could do is kind of like face as a token, which is basically, you know, that alarm generates an event, right? Like that person's on the, the list, you know, they're on your good list because they're there, they, get, you know, they trigger that, uh, it goes on to good list, but then it has to, you want to cross-reference to like an access control product. So, you know, that would basically compare your list and give you that outcome that Facial recognition, probably, yeah. And then you would want to use the Vigilant access control to get like that muster report so that um, essentially that face is a token uh, is working off, you know, a, a list in access control. The two don't match, right? Then, then you get that uh, notification report. Uh, it's not necessarily a lot of money, right? Like, um, well, like, uh, what, 10 cameras of facial recognition is like five grand or something like that. Uh, in a Vigilant appliance that you're running access control on is maybe, I don't know, like, a, you wouldn't need a, you, mean you, could, you don't need anything with doors on it, actually. I mean, but if you were doing, uh, so you could just do like a 16 door appliance for like three grand or something like that. So I mean, you could probably get into it for under ten grand, and then it's, and then there's probably, well, plus if if you were already on an Vigilant server, okay. Um, so essentially, it's probably around ten grand. I'm guessing, just off the top of my head.
you also need cameras that can do facial recognition located in places where it makes sense, right? So, you know, in a hallway from, you know, the cafeteria back to the, to the pod or something, right? And so, um, um, not necessarily because, you know, the problem is like facial recognition works in real time. So if you're in the pod and they're just hanging out in there, you know, you're gonna get all kinds of reads all the time. So you want it past black point, like a choke point, so that they're not, you know, in that area, you know, just doggly. They're going straight past it. So you're doing like a count at that point, right? And then you can also throw on top of well no, because it, they're not closed in the system anymore. So um, uh, essentially, you know, the cleaner count that you can get, the better. So you want definitely want to be in an area where they're walking past it but slowly so that you can, and so I would use like a dual head camera mounted at about 72 inches up on the wall and then um, so you're getting you know good face shots and then that way you can get from you know coming and going It's a tricky problem. I mean, yeah. Is that that private facility or not? I just described you, you could still do on private. Um, and like most cloud products, like don't even do facial recognition. So, I think you need to look. This is, this is dad. This is his son. His son used to be a student here. Oh, so. I don't know. Like, um, check for a while yeah. before. He might have did it through his phone. Yeah. cameras Uh, I got an 
nice wacky one for you and just wanted to see what your initial reaction was. <laughs> Dude, I find I'm like a magnet for these things. So, uh, here you go. Uh, So um, this one is Colorado, and uh, it's a corrections facility where they had some people missing. They want to basically do like a facial recognition muster report. So what I was thinking is using like face as a token type of technology. Um, so your white list, you know, sends a, an alert, um, you know, or you know, closes a rule, sends a dry contact to uh, access control that you know this is a this person. Hello? Hi, is this Lucella? Um, yeah. Hi, Lucella. This is Tanya with the Wildberry Forest School District. How are you doing? But it's going to run into ACM. ACM's going to do I'm muster. doing well. I'm sorry that so, we've been just going back and forth through the phone call that I know that there's a board. Uh, but I did get that application uh, and I wanted to verify. That information can be like, turned into the like the leading credential. Are you the only person emergency contact? Um, well, she's actually with and it's in the official on website if you look up faces of the token. Okay, so. But I mean. Do you have another emergency contact that we could add? Yeah, but I'm pretty application? sure that would determine you know who's who, right? Because uh, that's the thing is that you have to carry over the identity. Okay, so let me switch that to a different one. Yeah. All right, bear with me. Yeah. And Guillermo, is that G U I? So it's possible. Yeah. And then okay, you have that's all I needed for right now. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, June 25th, 1968. Yeah. The people counting in order to get that data, you have to go to cloud. All right, and then can I get his phone number? Yeah. yeah.
have to help switch some files over with all that up here. Well, he did the work. Well, he, he did the work to get it done. But you guys, I mean, changing and letting to come in this afternoon and getting that time to make the call. I, I do have enough stuff to do. You guys having enough stuff to do, but finding time, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you.
Good times, man. Like I said, ish. We're ish. You can give me a lunch today. Yeah, I'll give you a lunch. Uh -oh. Give me an hour. I think uh, I'm still recording. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs>